Tatsa Yoshikawa is the main artist behind the Breath of Fire series and had quite the influence on the Mega Man X games as well as the Devil May Cry franchise. Despite not necessarily looking for a job in the gaming industry, in 92 Capcom hired him to work on the company's first traditional RPG named Breath of Fire. Here he was responsible for the in-game graphics and although the role of the main character designs were given to his peer, Keiji Inafune, Tatsuya took care of the promotional illustrations as well. And without a doubt, this art style is reminiscent to the classic 90s manga character proportions. Tall legs, big eyes, filled cheeks and the relative small torsos. In addition, all the works were shaded with saturated tones and contained some hatching lines reminding me most of watercolor pencils. That aside, in the same period, he also worked with Keiji on the first Mega Man X titles only this time functioning as the graphic designer. Nonetheless, for Capcom it was undeniable that his talent had to be expanded on. And therefore he got the role to be the character designer of the Breath of Fire 2 cast. And oh boy, in my opinion he knows how to draw female characters in an elegant manner. Furthermore, all his characters are drawn with poses that reveal their personality. And while this is quite common, in my eyes he emphasizes this trait a lot more than his peers. To put it differently, he's a true illustrator that really likes to go for the total package, ideally putting his characters into the world's environment, which becomes especially evident in the later installments. In 95, he worked on the object designs for Mega Man 7 and the character designs for Mega Man X3. In this case, the Mega Man series had already established the overall art guidelines, which he perfectly integrates like all before him. Two years later he became the character creator of Breath of Fire 3. Here the team decided to go for brighter colors combined with shonen manga features which were popular at the time. Tatsuya mentioned that the decision surrounding the style of the series was quite a competition. And as he ended up in charge, quickly became the highlight of his Capcom career. Achievement aside, he admitted he went more for quantity than quality to ramp up the illustrations department. Even so, this sharp angular style perfectly fit the monster and dragon designs of the game. At the start of the 2000s, Tatsuya was in charge of the character designs and in-game graphics of Breath of Fire 4. Therefore, it might come to no surprise that his art style and in-game sprites both contained this cohesive pastel coloring aesthetic. Furthermore, he created multiple full-blown illustrations that were either based on events and overall setting of the game. To expand on, he personally stated that he likes to consolidate the story into one picture. And to me, this Breath of Fire 3 art piece expresses the game's opening to its score. In O2, he directed the motion designs of Clock Tower 3 and had created the character art for Breath of Fire 5, Dragon Quarter. Irrespective of one's personal opinion on the game and its place in the series, the story is dark and grim, which is perfectly translated into the art. Adding on, this installment contained the most full-blown illustrations as of yet. Simply because this was the game where he decided to focus more on design instead of making good art. Quality over quantity, as he himself put it. Although he likes to use warm colors of oil paint, for conventionality he did switch to digital art in most of his future works. Moreover, the game's development period was similar to Mega Man X8. And as you can see, his personal style actually leaks into this series that is normally expressed with typical shonen manga character and coloring guidelines. Style aside, he did character designs for Mickey Mouse Mysterious Mirror and concept artwork for the game Haunting Ground soon after, with the latter game being somewhat similar to Clock Tower, only with a four-legged companion. In 06, he worked on the remakes of Mega Man Powered Up and Maverick Hunter X. Here he took the role of redesigning the general overhaul of the installments. A year later, he was asked to be co-illustrator of Zack and Wiki, Quest for Bearer's Treasure. And because the art style is so cartoony, truth to be told, I have no clue which illustrations he was responsible for. I mean, did he work on this guy or the freaking monkey? Anyways, he did, of course, the artwork of Devil May Cry 4. Here he designed Nero's appearance, who was actually created to introduce new players to the series to gain a sense of growth because the main protagonist Dante became too powerful. Nero was created to be different and yet familiar and thus included his demonic right arm, the Devilbringer. 
Between our 10 and 15, Tatsuya continued on as a character designer for Last Ranker, Twilight Valkyries, Blade of Fantasia, and Dungeon Popper. Also, like many of his peers, he left his initial company and became a freelancer. Interestingly, he stated that his artistic influences were inspired by Akira Yasuda, aka Akiman, who created many popular Street Fighter characters such as Chan Li and Sakura. To put it more specific, in one of their conversations, Akira stated that if he wanted to go to the next level, he should focus on making good designs, as good art in the industry should be a given. Furthermore, Tatsuya was inspired by the works of Masamune Shiro, who is best known for his Ghost in the Shell manga. In Oten, Tatsuya did character designs for Star Fox Zero and Devil May Cry 5. In 22, he began on the character designs of Slitherhead at Boca Studio. In this case, he got inspiration from popular films and series that most people are familiar with. And in an interview, he stated, that during his creative process, he likes to imagine the actions and past events that defines the character. As he definitely showed this massive range of styles through the years. Just for fun, I compiled some of his Battle Fire character illustrations in a back-to-back -back comparison. I'm Fancy Light Novel author GP Fools. And one thing that annoys me is that Capcom's official Breath of Fire art book does not mention his name at all. Chances are it's because he became a freelancer and the rights of his works are of course Capcom's. But honestly, his illustrations filled 80% of the pages, which definitely deserves credit and at least recognition.